Hi guys, and welcome to this beginner to advanced Forex course, where we are going to teach you how to start to become successful within the foreign exchange markets. Now, my name is Alex. I have been a professional trader for roughly five years now, which means that I don't just use my own money and trade within the markets. I also have a job as a professional trader. So I'm going to teach you how to succeed within this foreign exchange markets, as I just said. But first of all, I've got to go over some of the basics. So stick around, watch everything in order, make sure that you are paying attention, you are learning, because this is going to build the foundation for your future within the foreign exchange. So first of all, let's quickly go over what is Forex here. So... What is Forex, right? So Forex trading basically means currency trading. It's the decentralized global market where all the world's currencies trade, exchange with each other. So that's what it is. And this, what I was on before previously, this is what it actually looks like when you were trading. If I just remove my indicators so it makes a bit more sense. As you can see here, these charts, I can go from the one hour to the one month to the 30 second. All this is telling me is it, what has been happening with the currency since, um, I believe, we can go back on this one to here. This is March 71. 1971. So it's 1971. It's told me what the currency has been doing. However, and we'll go into this in a bit more detail later, what we can see here is that there's Euro USD. Basically, as we said before, you buy, exchange, you sell currencies. But it's always with two. They are always paired. This is the pair that you are buying and selling, and this is the pair that you're buying and selling against. So for example, the reason why the market is going up is because the euro, the first pair that we're looking at, EUR stands for euro, is going up in strength in relation to the second pair, the US dollar. USD equals US dollar. So all this is telling me is that, hey, the euro is going up. That doesn't necessarily mean that the US dollar is falling. It could just mean that the US dollar is staying stagnant. But the euro is gaining, is increasing in its strength. And of course, the opposite is here as well. The euro is now falling. The value of the euro is falling in relation to the US dollar. Again, this might not mean that the USD is getting stronger. It might mean that... Uh, Euro staying, uh, the US dollar is staying stagnant, but the euro is losing value. Now, why do these things happen? That can be a factor of things. It could be financial news. It could be recessions. It could be in change of government. So the foreign exchange is basically just telling you how strong or weak a currency is becoming in relation to another currency. That's what we can see here. Euro is getting stronger. Euro is getting weaker but it's always in relation to this other pair. And it's the same if we go here. In fact, let's do a better one than that. So this one is showing me that the Great British Pound is falling, is losing in value against the Japanese Yen, which means what? It can't buy as much Japanese Yen. If the Great British Pound falls in value, at this point it could buy uh, 245 uh, Japanese yen. They do it a little bit differently, doesn't make as much sense. Let's go into a better example. For example, here we could buy, and I'm looking at this area here, 1.58, 0 0.58. So at this point, one Australian dollar could buy one Canadian dollar, a whole Canadian dollar and five cents. That's what it could buy. Now, at this point, when it fell, all it can buy is 85 cents. One Australian dollar can now buy 85 cents in terms of a Canadian dollar, right? So that's what the foreign exchange market is. It's telling us what's the price, how much this uh, currency can buy of this currency, and so on and so forth. Now, if we go back to this slide, why would you trade Forex? 
Well, as we can see here, the Forex market, market is open 24 hours a day, different parts of the world, from 5 p.m. EST on a Sunday to 4 p.m. EST on a Friday. Because of this, at any time of the day, you can find an active pair to trade. For example, these charts are live right now. So if we went to, in fact, let me just go to here. I can show you that they're live. What we'll be able to see is this. This candlestick will start to move. And you'll be able to see while I'm talking, as you see, it's going down, it'll go up. This is a live chart. So right now, the price is fluctuating between this 0.88 and let's say if it goes down 0.88131 rather than 0.88143. It's always moving in price. Now, today is my Friday. So obviously, it's still open, as we could tell from that last slide. So five days a week, my Monday to Friday it's going to be open, and eventually it will close, right? So over the weekend, primarily, it's closed. It's not really going to do anything. Traders aren't going to be working. So it's amazing if you have uh, a full-time job at this moment. You've got a part-time job, casual job, because it's open. Whenever you come home from work, before you go to work, while you're at work, if you're doing it on your break, you can trade. So it really helps you out there. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. For those five days, it is going to be open and you can trade at any point. That's really helpful. However, there's also another big reason why you should be trading. And it's this. So say we start off with $1,000 in our, our bank account here, right? We're starting off with $1,000. What we are now going to do is say we make 3% a week. 3% of our total account. So obviously 1% of $1,000 would be 10 bucks. We're saying we're just going to make 30 bucks a week right now. 3% for a beginner for you guys, great, great percentage to achieve. No one says within the Forex world, I'm going to make 20 bucks or I'm going to make 1,000 or 3,000. And I'll tell you why right now. We always talk about percentages and say it's going to be a weekly compounding because we're making that. 3% a week. We're not going to add any more additional contributions, which you could do at any point in time. But let's say we did that for a year, right? We made 3% a week, every week for a year. How much money would we make? $3,650. Well, we'll get into why that's a bit more important in a second. But what we can see here is the month on month earnings. Do you see how this first month it's $136.65? But the next month, it's 155.33. That is because we are compounding our interest. We made 3% in this first week, right? Of the $1,000. So now we have 1,030 for the second week that we're going into. Because we just made in our first week $30. But now we're making 3% of 1,030. Now, what would that equal? We'd be somewhere at 1060 but it might be and 18 cents. Each time we're adding a little bit more money. That's why when... Oh, apologies. One, two, three. When we look down here, it's slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know what you're thinking. At the end of the month, you're only making $559 per month. It's not a lot of money. It's not a little bit of money, but it's not a lot. We you only make in the first year $3,650. But let's see what happens in two years. You went from making $3,000 to making $20,000. So the difference is now you've made $17,000 in your second year. And at the end of the second year, you are making $2.6K a month. $2,600. And let's see what happens the third year. Say, roughly around a university degree. Let's calculate that, shall we? Now we've made $100,000. So we've gone from $3,000 to $17,000. Say 100000 minus 17, right? So that's roughly $83,000. You're now making $83,000 at the end of your third year, and you are now making $12,000 a month which is what you basically made 
the whole of last year, you're making in a month. That is why you should be trading Forex. It is open five days a week, 24 hours a day. With this compounding interest only making 3% a week, which is possible, if you just said 3% a week, only 3%, mind you, only 3%, you could, within three years, possibly be making $12,000 a month. That's not crazy. That's not out of there. And why else is this really good, guys? All you need is the internet. I have traded on a beach in Thailand, in northern Myanmar. I have traded back home in the UK. I trade here in Australia. It doesn't matter where I am in the world. I can trade. And because it's open 24 hours, it doesn't matter, again, where I am because it's going to be open. So it's perfect for an adventurous lifestyle. It's perfect for you guys that just want to get out of the grind and start really focusing on, I guess, the rest of your life. So that's why you should be trading Forex. So let's go on and continue. So again, I'm just going to go a bit more into these Forex market hours for you because I think it is important. Take a screenshot of this, write it down, have a look at it, right? Because this is going to be quite important. So, oh, sorry. So the Forex market is divided into four trading sessions. Sydney, Tokyo, London, and New York. However, most traders will clump these two together. Sydney and Tokyo are usually just called the Asian session. And then you will have the London session and the New York session. Now, just because the market is open for this full 24 hours does not mean you should trade all day. Because each market has different opening and closing times, but each market also has a different amount of volatility. If you think about the Asian session, right, these are the only two big financial hubs in the whole of Asia, right? Uh, I guess you could count ha Hong Kong as well, but not that many people are awake. This side of the world, my side of the world in Australia, wakes up before everyone else. So all these billions of people are sleeping. But what happens when London wakes up? Not only is Asia still around... I mean, the financial markets have closed, but the retail traders are still up. But now the whole of Europe is awake. The whole of Europe. And they have London, France, Germany, big financial hubs. I mean, the whole of Scandinavia is awake at this point. Right? So there's a lot more money, a lot more volatility going around. I personally trade the London session. Even though I am in this time zone here, I trade the London session. I don't trade in New York because it doesn't work for me. But again, the New York has a different set of rules and a different operation system, and you'll be able to see it. So usually my advice to new traders is to pick one. But put these ones down, because around the summer to April time, this is what it's like. We've calculated it with daylight savings. And of course, this is the winter timetable as well. Obviously, it's October to April. So... Yeah, if you are looking for coming into this time, you are going into your winter timetable, again, just take a screenshot of this. That is what it looks like here. Another thing that I really want to touch on, just quickly, is this. Who is trading in the foreign exchange, right? So... Do we think that it's just a random set of numbers, algorithms, financial news that makes the markets go up and down? No, there's also big financial players within the foreign exchange that dictate what is happening. Sometimes you will see massive surges in the market or massive downfalls in the market and you'll be thinking to yourself, why did that happen? For example... You can see that all the market's just moving along normally, and then all of a sudden we have a big drop. Now, this is because the weekend has come on in, but again, we have a massive candlestick here. Things that just don't look quite right are sometimes because of banks. Now, what do banks do? What do they have the power to do? Well, like you and me, we go there for loans. We go there for mortgages. They have a lot of of money, billions, trillions of dollars. So imagine this, if you are a bank with an infinite amount of money, because they have quite a lot, let's be honest, if I wanted to suddenly sell 
or buy a thousand Australian dollars against Canadian dollars, what do you think that would do to the market? We should actually get a bigger example. A million, two million, three million. Again, that might be child's play. Think of our bank account, right? We might have a thousand dollars. What do they have? Four, five, six, seven million? We say we're going to make three percent a week. What is their 3% a week? What does that look like? So imagine the money. Imagine what happens when they put their buy orders in. All of a sudden, it can surge the market up right before it drops all the way back down here. So the banks are in here, and they're here to play. So in the later stages of this beginner to advanced section, we will talk about the banks. We'll talk about a bit more about what happens and what they do. But you've got to be careful and remember that they are in there. It's the same with hedge funds. Again, they don't have as much money, and I'll just briefly touch on them. They don't have as much money as banks, but again, if you can imagine hedge funds, even like Vanguard, you know, if you've watched The Big Short or anything like that, you'll know that some of these hedge funds do have quite a lot of money, so they are able to do the same thing. And then on the other side of this, there are us. We are called retail traders. So if you ever hear the word retail trader, just think of you and I. Just normal individuals with not a lot of money. We could even go up to roughly a couple of hundred thousand, even up to a million, because we'll never get around this area. See, banks and hedge funds, they can work with each other. They don't need a broker. They are the broker, right? We go to them to give them our money. They can just hop straight into foreign exchange and do their own trades. Retail traders like you and me, we can't just go to foreign exchange. I can't just go here. I'm looking at the charts, but I just can't place a, a buy or sell. There's no option for me here to do that. I need to go to a broker. That's why you see things like IG markets or... Uh, Pepperstone, for example, we have to go to them and they place trades on our behalf because we don't have that much money. We don't really have a big effect on the markets at all. These guys are like the whales. We are like the krill. We're really small, but there are quite a lot of us. So that's what we're in the markets to do. Get in here and make some money. So that is who is in the markets at this given point in time. Right, guys? So just to make sure that we've got everything here, we've talked about when you can trade. Here are the timetables. Again, take a screenshot if you need to. We've talked about what is Forex. We know that it is this. It is the market. We know that we buy and sell currency, and it's basically showing us the strength of a currency against another one. New Zealand dollar, we can tell it's going down in value in comparison to the US dollar. It's the same with Euro CAD. We can see here that the Euro is getting stronger and it can now buy more Canadian dollars. As we can see here, one Euro could buy a dollar thirty two Canadian dollars, one Euro, and then it went up to a one dollar thirty three. So one Euro could buy a dollar thirty three. But then of course we know it goes all the way down to here where it can only buy a dollar thirty and so on and so forth. So that's what the Forex market is teaching us. We know who is in the market as well. So we have our, um, our banks, our hedge funds, and we've also got our retail traders. So that is basically summed up here. And of course, and one of the most important things, if I just hop off this for one second, why should we be trading it? Well, Here's your big reasons. Within three years, you could make $100,000. And again, if you've been trading as long as me, this is probably what you're looking at. Does that mean I have made that much money? Absolutely no, it doesn't. I have not been profitable this entire time. I want to make sure that is very clear. But I am on the path to doing it, and so can you. So stick around because you can have the lifestyle. You can trade anywhere. You can do all these things if you put in the right effort, if you teach yourself correctly, if you pay attention to what is coming up in the next couple of slides. So anyway, guys, that is it for this current lesson. I've covered a few topics. In the next sets, we'll be going